I want to welcome you to Management 125 Organizational Behavior. I, I'm your instructor for the semester. This is called an asynchronous course. So when we talk about a course, when we sit down and talk about a synchronous, that means we're all meeting at the same time. Sometimes when you put the letter A in front of a word, that means none. It comes from the Greek alphabet. So, so you put the, the A in front of it, so asynchronous, that means we don't meet all at the same time. So you're going to be meeting all at the time of your convenience. But you know what? Let me tell you a little bit about myself so you know my perspective on organizational behavior. Uh, I am a community college student that graduated once upon a time. I walked into a college in Michigan and I registered for the first course in English as part of my full semester load. That very first semester, I walked in at the ripe old age of 17 years old. The counselor was too busy talking about the pizza they wanted. So I just said, hey, register for the first course. That was a mistake. That first course was a pre-college English course. And by the third week, I'm kind of looking around in the course and thinking, I'm the smartest one in the room. And that's not really saying very much. The instructor said the same thing as, why are you in this course? He assigned me to an independent study room. And there, I learned how to speed read. I speed read pretty much about 990 plus words a minute with about a 92% retention rate. Pretty good. The best part about that whole gift from that first class I took, one of the very first ones in my entire academic career in higher education, I use it every single day. The professor is Dr. Rob Avery, awesome instructor. He taught me something special that I treasure to this day. The other guy was Professor Tom Cook. I was going to be a composer. So he taught music theory. He taught music history. He taught everything music. And he drove us mercilessly. Not only that, he had really, really bad jokes. Today we call the jokes dad jokes. He was the master of bad jokes or dad jokes. But the biggest thing is he pushed us super hard. I worked harder for his courses than I ever did in my entire life. By him pushing me, I went from being an average student to a, a high-end student. I was really impressed by that. So I have four different degrees, but the best instructors I ever had came from a community college. To be honest, let me share with you, I want to follow in their footsteps, and I hope that I would be similar to something like that in you. If not, I'm going to give you my best effort regardless. The other thing was Dr. Rob Avery uh, talked about a thing called the Strong's Interest Inventory Test. That test sat there, and, and you go through, and they take your personal choices in your life, the things that you'd like to do, and they put them onto the job market, and they give them job titles. So I ended up getting a list of, of four different major categories that fit my interest. In each category, I had 10 different potential jobs in it. The jobs came back, and one of them said, you should be a CPA, an accountant. Another, one's, another, another section says, you should be an attorney. You should be a chief human resource officer. Well, number one, an account seriously tracking numbers? Me? I'm going to be a composer. I'm going to be an English writer. I'm going to break this. I'm going to do this. I, and then the attorney, we all know about those attorneys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then a chief human resource officer, I said, huh? What's that? You know what? That test was so accurate. Here's kind of my job history. I have been a chief human resource officer for 18 years. I've been a chief business officer in charge of finances for a budget of $811 million. I've handled the legal affairs for two college districts. Gee, I think the test was spot on. I encourage you to take that as well. I'm going to probably promote this one other time in this course. Just drop me an email if that interests you. I think community colleges are a great launching point. And I think because of that, you have made a really smart move already. Here's why. You have a local school. You're going to have a small class size. If you go into university, some of them are phenomenal. Cal State Fullerton, Cal State Long Beach, UCI. They're great schools, but you're going to walk into a classroom with 100 plus students. And it's not uncommon to have 150 to 170 students in one classroom. And the instructor never, never has a chance to interact with the students. I'm available to you simply by email or office hours. And But the other part of it really is what I call the Kurt story. Our youngest son decided that we, we had saved money for his four years going away to school and everything else. And he came up with the deal. He likes to negotiate kind of like me. Okay. So he, what he negotiated was, how about if I go locally and, and we take that money and we apply it to my master's degree? 
Yeah, we agreed to it. So he lived right over here. He went to Saddleback College, Irvine Valley College. He graduated in two years. By the way, if you're a full-time student, you should be making two years your goal to get out of IVC, get that associate degree, and, and then go on afterwards. So he graduated in two years, got his degree. He went over to Concordia. He graduated in two more years. In four years, he had his bachelor's degree. He still had not borrowed one dime. He's still using that savings account we had. And then he went to Chapman University, got his MBA out of Chapman. And guess what? He graduated without one bit of debt, zero debt. He met this gal. She also graduated with a master's degree in accounting. And so it was really good, except she was $91,000 in debt. Five years later, they're married. Now they pay down their debt. Oh, really good. They're down to $77,000 in debt. That debt weighs over them like a giant anchor because of the fact that, that it's heavy, it's difficult, and they have to pay it off eventually, no matter what. You've made a smart move. You're being financially smart as you go in the process of your academic career. Here's my degrees. I have an Associate of Arts in, in, in Liberal Arts from Macomb Community College, a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration from Wayne State University in Detroit, uh, an MBA from Oakland University, and a PhD in Organizational Behavior, kind of like this course, from the Union Institute in University. So I have different degrees, but going back, community college was, was exactly where I started. My first job going from, from sitting as a full-time student into the workforce was sitting for, for, for my 20 credit hours. I was really pushing really hard to finish up early as fast as I could make my bachelor's degree. I went from that to a retail store manager. It was a great experience, but I was working 55 to 65 hours a week on your feet a lot. It was mind-numbing work, and you would make decision, decision, about 10 to 12 decisions every hour, and by doing that, I learned how to make decisions. I went from there, of all things, to be a principal. I have a knack for organizing things, and people noticed that, and they wanted me to help start a, a brand new Christian school. I thought it was a great job. I totally loved it. The pay was outrageously bad, bad benefits, no pension plan, but it was certainly an awful lot of fun. The school was doing fine. The church got in trouble. They're going to sell our building and go find a real job. So I ended up going to a place called Kramer Homes Housing Cooperative. There I had 87 huge buildings. We had 500 condos. We actually had 17% of all the housing in the city of Centerline, Michigan. It was a huge complex. I was general manager. I learned an awful lot of skill sets over there, especially about how people get along. I set up a 20 year plan and surprisingly, I went back 12 years after I left that place and they're still using my 20 year plan. It was doing pretty good. Um, th from there, I became a facilities transportation manager at Fitzgerald Public Schools. That was a great job, my first union experience. Uh, and then I went from, from there to become my first uh, chief business officer role as the director of campus and services at Oakland Community College, Auburn Hills. From there, I ended up being director of operations at Oakton for five campuses. And of all things, we applied for a job over here at College of the Desert in Palm Desert, California. And my very first job in human resources was as a vice president. Well, I had lots of different negotiating skills that could handle money. So, and I have people skills that people were impressed by that. So I ended up getting that job. And from there, I came right over here to South Orange County Community College District as the vice chancellor of human resources. From there, I asked the board if I could become a professor of business, and that is my background. So, and then for fun, I authored four books, actually five books. One is still out uh, on review, but my, my most intense one is called Backboneology, Tough Decisions at Work. It's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, a couple other places. A couple of poem books. One is called Naked Turtle Dances, Zombie Dearest, Poems for Young Zombies, and Vietnamese American Pride. You might notice I'm not Vietnamese. I just really like the culture. So, so we have that. I also have a a, a play that we produce here at um, IBC called Zombie Dearest in 2018. Probably another one on its way, and some other screenplays and stage plays. If you need to get a hold of me during this class, the best way is always by email. We can set up time. I have office hours. You can come visit me in my office on Monday, Monday morning. On Wednesday, you can see me online. I set aside time for that as well. So, so, so check out my email. Let me know what's going on if you have any difficulties. With that, we're going to next dive into a, a whole series of different things about the details of the course coming up right after this.
Take care.